What's up my fellow nerds? I'm Chris and welcome back to D's Nerds. And today we're going to be taking a trip through our Scream Factory collection. All right, so when it comes to physical media, particularly when it comes to movies on physical media, you know, there are several boutique labels uh, that are out right now that are just doing some really cool stuff. Uh, you know, I think mainly of uh, ones like Criterion, Kino Lorber, um, Arrow Video. You know, they're just doing some really cool stuff. But my personal favorite is Shout, uh, and namely their Screen Factory uh, imprint of that, which mainly focuses on like on horror or, you know, kind of darker kind of movies. So, uh, like I said, I've accumulated several of those films and um, I'm excited to kind of go through and show you those today. What I really love about what Shout Factory and Scream Factory does is they really put some really good special features on there. Um, sometimes the, because you know, they're a third party usually, they license out those from other studios. So really they get kind of what the studios give them. So sometimes... You know, the picture quality could be improved upon a lot more because you know, sometimes they're getting older scans. But really, they do a good job, I think, of trying to put together some really cool special features and putting together the best presentation for the film and the definitive version of that film that's out on, uh, on Blu-ray or 4K. So um, I'm excited to kind of go through here and show you what I got. And uh, I'm really also excited because there's a big Scream Factory uh, release that's coming out here shortly, which is the Friday the 13th box set. You've heard me talk about that in a couple of other videos on the channel. And uh, actually, I'm showing that mine's going to be arriving here in about two days, and I'll definitely be doing an unboxing on that one. Uh, so what better way to celebrate than to go through the rest of my Scream Factory collection? All right, so the first one I have here is Big Trouble in Little China. Of course, of course Kurt Russell is just awesome in this film. I mean, it's, it is definitely a quirky film. It is you think going into it, if you've never heard anything about the film, you think it's going to be one style of film, and it completely throws you for a loop. Uh, I really love this film, and I really love the presentation that Shout Factory put together on this. You know, first of all, they did really good, I thought, with the disc art. I thought that looks really good, but then they also like the one cool thing Shout Factory does is they do reversible uh, covers. So um, in this case here, you know, you have that one, which I chose, but then they also do this one as well, which I think also looks really cool. I should also mention that you know, the special features on this film, there's a lot of interviews on here. First of all, there's an audio commentary with the producer J. Larry Franco, and there's also another commentary with um, special effects artist Steve Johnson, um, also one with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, which that one's pretty cool. Um, anytime they do a commentary together, I know there's one on another film I have, and it, they're really entertaining. Uh, there's an isolated score, uh, theatrical trailers, TV spots, vintage interviews with cast and crew. There's also interviews with actors Dennis Dunn, James Hong, Peter Kwong, Donald Lee, associate producer, martial arts cho choreographer James Liu, and more. Interviews with John Carpenter, Kurt Russell, cinematographer Dean Cundy, uh, producer Larry Franco and stuntman Jeff Imada, uh, vintage featurette, deleted scenes of music video, gag reel, and extended endings, still galleries, and of course, a lot more. Um, but once again, that just goes to show like how many special features that uh, Scream and Shout will actually try to pack in on a movie disc because they want it to be the the definitive release of that film whenever possible. So, um, you know, that one's got a lot of interviews. All right, so next one up is Carrie, which one of the great horror films of all time. You know, Sissy Spacek and just a wonderful performance. I believe she was nominated for an Academy Award, as was the actress that played her mother. I forget who that was. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, Piper Laurie. Yeah, she also got nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Um, what else can you say? I mean, you know, I think, you know, this looks really good. Of course, there's, there's the uh, disc art on that as well. And then there is also a reversible cover on this one which uh, that is the front. That's the one I chose to put on that film because I don't know, I wasn't a big fan of of that one very much, but uh, so I chose to, to do that one. Normally, I do the more like VHS-y kind of movie poster kind of cover for it, but this one, I just, I just thought that was a cool uh, cover that they came up with. Um, you know, this one's also, like I said, got a ton of special features on it. First of all, uh, this is a 
the quality on this actually comes from a 4K scan of the original negative. So as far as it being on Blu-ray format, it's pretty much you know a really high quality scan there. Um, theatrical trailer. There's also a trailer gallery. There's new interviews with um, writer Lawrence D. Cohen, editor Paul Hirsch, actors Piper Laurie, P.J. Souls, Nancy Allen, Betty Buckley, William Catt, and Edie McClurg, casting director Harriet B. Helberg, uh, director of photography Mario Tossi, and composer Pino DiNaggio. I mean, that's a ton of new interviews. Um, there's a Horrors Hallowed Ground, revisiting the film's original locations. This is usually a common thing that happens through uh, Scream or Shout Factory's uh, special features that they'll add. Um, I forget the gentleman that does these. I believe he has a YouTube channel. I'd have to look more into it, but um, he will go on and he will visit the location, the filming locations for a particular movie. Uh, so that, that's always a really cool thing to see. Um, there's one called Acting Carrie, which is interviews with actors Sissy Spacek, Amy Irving, Betty Buckley, Nancy Allen, William Catt, and Piper Laurie. Priscilla Pointer and PJ Souls and art director Jack Fisk and director Brian De Palma. <laughs> Again, a ton of interviews on this. Uh, visualizing Carrie interviews with Brian De Palma, Jack Fisk, Lawrence D. Cohen, Paul Hirsch. A look at Carrie the Musical, TV spots, radio spots, still gallery, and rare behind the scenes photos. And uh, Stephen King and the Evolution of Carrie text gallery. Um, yeah, this, like I said, this one's just crammed full of. Uh, special features again and uh, you know just the sheer amount of interviews it's it's just kind of gargantuan really but uh you know it definitely for a uh, film of this stature one of the great horror films of all time one of the great Stephen King adaptations um, they definitely went all out so the next film is Crush with Alicia Silverstone and um, Carrie Elwes uh, gosh I mean this is such a creepy movie uh, it's I mean, I really recommend it, uh, and definitely, I think this one really defined uh, Alicia Silverstone's, uh, really kind of kick-started her career, um, but, you know, looking at the disc art there, it looks really good. Um, one thing, this isn't really a reversible cover, but the inlet there is, of course, her right there, which, you know, I mean, in this movie, I mean, she is just all out to try to, to get Carrie Elwes to, you know, go out with her. She's very possessive, and uh, clingy is an understatement. Let's just say that. But I mean, you know, it's it's a it's definitely a very kind of creepy film in that regard. As far as special features go, uh, we've got an audio commentary with writer director Alan Shapiro, and new interviews with Kurt Wood Smith, who you might know as Red Foreman from that '70s show. He plays the dad in this one as well. Alicia Silverstone's character's dad, and uh, Jennifer Rubin, and a theatrical trailer. All right, so the next film was one I was very excited to hear that uh, Shout slash Scream did a release for this because it was one of my favorite films growing up as a kid, which is Darkman, the uh, Sam Raimi-directed film starring Liam Neeson. I mean, this film just, it was so awesome, and definitely you can see that, that is kind of Sam Raimi's, I would call it a bridge movie between, you know, the horror stuff that he did, you know, like Evil Dead, moving more into, you know, superhero stuff like he did with the Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire. And I mean, this is, I still think this is a fantastic movie. I think it's a very underutilized character. I would love to see like a Darkman TV series come back at some point. Uh, but like I said, love this film to death. And uh, I think the uh, the release here is really good. Uh, probably the picture quality could be a little bit better. Um, but like I said, they're kind of at the mercy of whatever whatever they get as far as, you know, scans. So they just kind of do what they can. But uh, as far as, you know, their cover, like that's of course the original kind of poster art, which I really think is awesome. But then as well, um, there is that one as well, which I think is, is pretty cool too. Um, but I, I definitely had to go for, for the original on that one. Uh, again, great special features on this one. You've got a, a new interview with Francis McDormand, uh, audio commentary with director of photography, Bill Pope. That will be just fine. An interview with actor Larry Drake. Durant's Men interviews with actors Dan Bell and Danny Hicks. Darkman's Design interviews with production designer Randy Sir and art director Philip DeGort. The Face of Revenge, an interview with special makeup creator Tony Gardner. Original storyboards, theatrical trailer, TV spots, vintage electronic press kit, vintage cast and crew profiles, Sam Raimi, Liam Neeson, and Francis McDormand, and Larry Drake. 
uh, like I said, just a lot of great uh, interviews and different things in there. And, uh, you know, for me, loving that movie so much, it's just fantastic to have that through the, the Shout Scream uh, library. As well, um, they also released um, the sequel that kind of made for, you know, the, the directed uh, video sequel, um, Darkman 2, The Return of Durant. And this does not star Liam Neeson. Uh, this does star Arnold Boslu, who you might know from the Mummy trilogy with uh, Brendan Fraser. Uh, so he's Darkman in this. And really, honestly, uh, these films hold up. I mean, they're not as... They're definitely a step down from the original one, but I really do enjoy these films as well. And, um, you know, of course, there's the disc art. And uh, let me show it a little better. So there's the disc art. And then, the ins again, it's not a reversible cover, but it does have a pretty cool little... Um, Little artwork there, if you can see it in the light. I kind of got, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's kind of cool. And then as well, um, we also had uh, the the third or the second, well, Dark Man Three, Die Dark Man Die. That one is also out on Screen Factory. And once again, you know, we have the uh, the disc art there, and then we have the uh, inner kind of photos there as well. So, like I said, it. You know, they, they, they really went all out loud. As far as special features, there's not a whole lot on the sequels. There's just an audio commentary with the director for three. And then for two, um, there's an audio commentary and a television cut of the film featuring alternate and extended scenes. Um, and that that's only in standard definition. But, uh, uh, you know, like I said, these were films I grew up with as a kid and had almost kind of forgotten about them. And then once I saw that these were out through Shout Scream Factory, I was just like, Let's do it. Let's get some Dark Man going. All right. So the next one is another John Carpenter classic, which is Escape from New York. I mean, come on. Another Kurt Russell, John Carpenter collaboration. You know, Snake Plissken is just so awesome in this. And uh, I really, I mean, they've got, again, great special features on here. But, uh, you know, again, you know, really cool disc art. Really like the way that looks there. And then... Uh, the alternate cover, which this would be more of like the original poster, which that's, I chose that one. I really like that one. But then, of course, you see the uh, the one that they designed for it, which looks pretty cool, too. Uh, I just like, I just like the way the other one looks. And um, kind of looking at the special features on this one as well, um, this is a 2K scan of the inner positive, uh, struck from the original negative. A uh, new audio commentary with actress Adrian Barbeau and director of photography Dean Cundy. Audio commentary with director John Carpenter and actor Kurt Russell. Again, those are really fun whenever they do those together. Uh, audio commentary with producer Deborah Hill and, and production designer Joe Elves. Uh, disc 2 has a new look at the special visual effects, including interviews with Dennis Skotak, Robert Skotak, and more. New interview with still photographer Ken Godley Walker. Uh, deleted scenes, uh, the original opening bank robbery sequence, Return to Escape from New York featurette, theatrical trailers, photo galleries. Uh, like I said, just really great representation of this film. All right, so we're again moving into John Carpenter territory with The Fog. I mean, you know, Tom Atkins, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, gosh, what, uh, Psycho, uh, Janet Lee, yeah, from Psycho. I mean, it's just a great, great film horrifying kind of film it's pretty creepy and uh, just a great ghost story i really enjoy this one a lot and um, like i said they uh they have you know the fog there that's the disc art and then again they have you know alternate covers so there's the alternate or that i guess that's considered the first cover because that's the one i always see whenever i see it listed you know on either blu-ray.com or something like that but then there's kind of the uh, the poster kind of art, which I chose that one, and it's really cool. And you know, looking at the special features there, um, so this has a new 1080p high definition transfer, supervised by cinematographer Dean Cundy. Um, I have seen where this one gets a little bit of uh, negative reviews as far as the quality there. They feel like it can be better. Um, you know, I've I don't know quite frankly. Um, yeah, there were spots where it looks kind of rough. I just kind of attribute it to being a 
you know, an early 80s kind of film, but that's just me. It didn't really bother me, though, but um, I don't think I am quite the uh, video file that, that other people are, though, so I feel like I can, you know, some things bother me, but mostly overall, I can kind of get over it. Um, so uh, there is an audio commentary with uh, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. A uh, new audio commentary with actors Adrian Barbeau, Tom Atkins, and producer or production designer Tommy Lee Wallace. New interview with Jamie Lee Curtis, Tales from the Mist, Inside the Fog featurette. Fear on Film, Inside the Fog featurette. The Fog Storyboard to Film featurette. Horse Hallow Grounds, again, where they kind of go on to... Um, the film locations where they were shot and kind of look at them kind of in the modern day. Um, and uh, outtakes, theatrical trailers, TV spots, and photo gallery. So, uh, yeah, I really love this film and um, really was very pleased with this uh, Screen Factory release. So the next one I present to you is one that kind of I have a little bit of regret with. So, uh, especially because it is probably my favorite horror franchise of all time. And just feels like I missed a golden opportunity. But we'll go, we'll, we'll take a look at it. So it is Halloween, the complete collection. Again, kind of in that John Carpenter vein again. Uh, so, of course, I have the 10-disc version here, um, which is a, is a good collection. Uh, really, uh, we've watched a lot of this stuff a lot through this collection. And it's currently out of print, I believe. But... The thing that makes me upset with myself a little bit was uh, several years ago, they came out with a 15-disc collection that was, you know, this big box. It looked really nice. And uh, at the time, I just couldn't justify the price and was just kind of like, that seems kind of silly to have such a huge box set. Uh, and then as time has gone on, I've gotten way more into collecting since that came out. And really kind of having you know nice and uh, you know nice box sets and things like that. And so of course it's out of print and that thing is going for crazy amounts of money now. I think it was like around 100, 150 bucks when it came out. And I, I don't exactly know, but that's kind of roundabout where I think I remember seeing it. Now that thing will easily go on eBay. You'll see it listed for like five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. It's so part of me is kind of kicking myself, especially with you know, the Friday the 13th box set coming out and you know it's in a very similar format as what that Halloween box set was I was like oh that would have been so cool to have uh, both of those box sets kind of mirroring each other you know two of my favorite horror franchises but say la vie it happens you know you, know, you can't uh, can't regret everything right so but this is this is a very good set and I really do enjoy it a lot so it's uh, basically, a, it's just housed in a box like that. So nothing too big there. Um, so, uh, and it's in two disc cases. So the first one here has a Halloween. Well, John Carpenter's Halloween, I should say. Let's, let's give the man some credit, shall we? Uh, Halloween 2. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Halloween 5, The Re Revenge of Michael Myers. So... Uh, includes those uh, films, and uh, it's just kind of housed uh, with, you know, and just a standard disc like that. So, you know, it just shows all the all the films right there. And, um, you know, as far as, like, what's on the inside cover here, it just kind of includes all the credits for the, for the five films. And then, um, you know, there's that, that pretty cool uh, photo of uh, Laurie Strode and Michael Myers there you know, fighting to the death, basically. Uh, but, you know, that's pretty cool. And then the second uh, case in the set, of course, it has Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, Halloween H2O, Halloween Resurrection, and then, of course, the Rob Zombie films, which was Halloween in 2007 and Halloween 2 in 2009. Um, you know, the one thing that the 15-disc set had, had special features and different things, but the big thing that I'm kind of like, uh, I wish I'd have just gotten that other set. Was it does have the producer's cut of Halloween: The Curse of Michael Myers? You know, now that movie, of course, you can find very there are very plentiful amount of videos out there on YouTube land that go into the trouble production behind this one and really just the differences between the theatrical cut and the producer's cut. So I won't get into that here, but um, 
you know, it would have been nice to kind of have that producer's cut in the set. I believe you can still purchase it separately. I might do that at some point, but it would have been nice to have it all in a big collection, but I'm also not going to pay north of 500 bucks for a set either. So I guess, I guess I'm cheap when it comes to that, but, um, so when that comes there, so again, same thing. So you just have the, the discs right there. Which is oh, that's pretty. And then of course the, the same thing here where you just have kind of the credits for the movie and then a small photo there at the bottom. So um, I believe what, what movie is that? Yep, that is from the movie that shouldn't exist, Halloween Resurrection. So, uh, But like I said, this one uh, definitely is a popular one in the entire film collection. Uh, we are actually moving, uh, we, we're uh, probably towards the end of the month, we're going to be ranking the entire Halloween franchise uh, from, you know, looking at John Carpenter's Halloween all the way to the 2018 Halloween film. Uh, very excited to see because that's one me and Michelle both, we both love that franchise a lot. I'm very interested to see how she ranks them. I have a feeling it's going to be quite different than how I rank them. Um, but that's one we've definitely been watching a lot, kind of preparing for that. All right, so next we have some sequels to probably one of the greatest um, horror, I wouldn't say horror, but definitely one of the greatest thriller movies of all time, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. We have uh, Psycho 2, which that was a film that whenever I first saw it, I had no desire to see it. I just kind of watched it because I was like, okay, we'll, we'll watch it. But I just figured there was no way you could top uh, Alfred Hitchcock not being in the director's chair and top that film. But it, it really is very worthy. Anthony Perkins gives another great performance. And, uh, you know, it's got some pretty cool special features. It's kind of lighter than, than some other Shout Scream releases. Uh, but it's got an audio commentary. It's got vintage video and audio interviews with Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, and director Richard Franklin. A uh, theatrical trailer and a TV spot. So, um so there's the disc art there. And then as well, um, kind of if you look at the inside there, it's just got some stills from the film, which, you know, it's it's cool to have kind of to look kind of inside the disc like that. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, as well, um, Psycho 3, this one was definitely not that great. Uh, it's definitely the weakest of the four Psycho movies. I can definitely say that. Uh, in, in my humble opinion, but you know, there it is right there. Uh, I do kind of like, I do kind of like the, the artwork on that. I mean, he clearly looks very deranged. Uh, but again, you know, like the, the discard is nothing to really ride home about. You know, it's just kind of the, the cover again, but, uh, you know, and then the, the, ins the inside here is just, again, more stills from that film. And, uh, again, slide on special features. It's, uh, audio commentary with screenwriter Charles Edward Pogue. Interviews with actors Kat Shea, Brink Stevens, and special effects makeup artist Michael Westmore and a theatrical trailer. And uh, now the, the next one is um, the Psycho 4. But uh, I really like this one, actually. And it kind of goes back in time and tells, uh, you know, tells Norman's story kind of from the beginning when, when Mother was still alive and Kind of is kind of like a flashback kind of sequence but uh again uh you know this one is definitely an improvement over three i really enjoyed this one uh you know the discard again is nothing to really uh write home about um you know it's just again a cut the, you know the cover you know, on the disc and uh but I, I do like this this is a little different you know i think we get a good shot of norman right there um thought that looks really good you know just some different ones from the film uh, but like i said this uh it might be good to kind of rank those at one point, but I really, um, I really did enjoy Psycho Four. Psycho Three is definitely the weakest of the bunch. Psycho Two is really good, and then of course, the first one is a classic. All right, so we have another Kurt Russell John Carpenter collaboration, and in my opinion, just one of the greats. The Thing. God, I love this movie so much. It is, it is so awesome. The special effects work is just fantastic. The performances are great. I mean, it's just, it's an awesome movie. I uh, fully, fully love it. And, you know, I probably watched it, I bought it here a few months ago, and I probably watched it three times <laughs> on my own since I, since I got it. Uh, but uh, again, just, just a great collection here. Of course, there's the, uh, let me kind of turn those around there. 
you can kind of see them halfway. But yeah, there's of course the disc art. And this one also has a reversible cover as well. And uh, there's the, uh, there's that one. I, I just was more partial to this one. So I stuck with that one. Uh, but yeah, it's a great, great, great horror movie. I cannot sing its praises enough. And the, uh, like I said, the special features, I mean, it, it's just, it's crammed full of stuff. So a new 2K scan of the Interposit supervised by, Interpositive, I should say. Sorry, I'm a little tired. It's a little late, so Chris is getting a little wacky. <laughs> uh, so a new 2K scan of the Interpositive supervised by director of photography, Dean Cundy. New audio commentary with Dean Cundy. I don't know if you've noticed, but his name's come up a lot as we've gone through it, because, I mean, he's, he mainly, he worked with John Carpenter on a lot of these films. Uh, audio commentary by director John Carpenter and actor Kurt Russell. Uh, this, I really like this audio commentary. It's very entertaining. Theatrical and teaser trailers, TV spots, radio spots, and still gallery. And then on disc two, as if that weren't enough, new interviews with cast and crew, John Carpenter's The Thing, Terror Takes Shape, documentary featuring interviews with John Carpenter, Kurt Russell, plus members of the cast and crew, The Making of The Thing, Outtakes, Network TV broadcast version of The Thing, three vintage featurettes, vintage product reel containing a condensed version of the film with alternate footage. Kind of cool. Behind the scenes footage, uh, annotated production archive, production art and storyboards, location scouting. I mean, you know, it's just to me, I know they're, they're coming. I know there's, I thought I saw somewhere where they were supposed to be coming out with a 4K version of the film. And I think I've seen that with some of these different Scream Factory releases. The, the problem with it is, is, you know, is the, is the uptick in quality worth you know, some of the special features that you get on these Scream Factory releases, that's where I'm kind of, you know, half in and half out. Like, you know, I want to have the best version of the film available. Uh, so, you know, but I also want those special features and, and all that stuff as well. So, you know, maybe in some cases I may have to make the decision to own two releases of the film, but that's eh, okay. That's, that's like what, you know, that's physical media collectors. That's, that's those problems, those first world problems, right? All right, this next one is just love this character so much. Swamp Thing. Oh, now, you know, Wes Craven, of course, directed this film. And I fully understand that you know, as they were making this film, it's like they just kept cutting the budget, cutting the budget, cutting the budget. And he really, you know, he did the best he could with what with what he was given. And I think overall, he, he does a very serviceable job considering the situation he was under. You know, there's certain things that you do have to kind of forgive. I mean, the suit is not great. I'm just going to be straight up and honest with you, and I'm not going to defend it. Uh, it's it's ba it's pretty bad, actually. Um, but, you know, Dick Duroc in the role is fantastic. Adrian Barbeau, she's great. Uh, Louis Jordan, come on. I mean, he's a great actor. He kills it as, and, as Dr. Arcane. And, uh, you know, it's just, a, I still really enjoy this film. It's fantastic. Uh, but as far as the release goes... Um, you know, it's uh, got the, of course, there's the disc art there, which is just really the the uh, the front artwork, basically. Um, and then, of course, you have, um, it looks like you have, like, a, a poster from back then. Um, kind of looks like it was in, I guess, French? Yeah, I guess it is in French. But, so that's kind of cool. And then just a couple of stills there, so... Yeah, uh, again, great release, and uh, the, the special features, I think, are really good, especially for a film like this. Audio commentary with writer-director Wes Craven, which any time that you can listen to Wes Craven just talk in general, I mean, he, he's such a brilliant guy anyway. It's just fun to listen to the guy talk just regardless of what it's about. So you know, whether you hear him talk about, you know, Freddy Krueger and on the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff or... You know, anything else he does, it's just a treat just to listen to that guy speak. Uh, audio commentary with makeup effects artist William Munns. Interviews with actress Adrian Barbeau, Swamp Thing creator Lynn Wine, and actor Reggie Batts. Uh, theatrical trailer and photo gallery. So, uh, you know, like, now they've, there's been some really cool Swamp Thing related releases here recently, especially you've got um, uh, the DC animated a film Justice League Dark, you know, he plays a good role in that, and he's really cool in that. And then you've got the um, the 2019 TV show that came out on DC Universe that was stupidly canceled after one season. I do not understand it because that 
TV show is spectacular. Those 10 episodes, Michelle and I were on the edge of our seats the whole time. And we just finished it probably, I'd say, a month or two, a month or so ago. I know we did we did a review of it. I'll, I'll, put, a, I'll put a link up here to it. Uh, we did a review for it. It was, we loved it that much. And, um, you know, we want to watch it again. So I uh, highly recommend that. But, you know, as far as this goes, it's still a, a I really enjoy this, this movie and this telling us one thing. All right. So we're down to the last three releases, which there's a lot of films crammed in these three releases. Um, so uh, the first one I'm going to go into, but I mean, there it's the three Vincent Price collections. So here's the first one. And uh, this one is actually the one that is out of print. Um, when we bought this a uh, few years ago, I had no idea it would go out of print. Now it's back in print. There's been a, a change or two made. Uh, they've done like a better um, uh, version of Mask of the Red Death, uh, a longer version, uh, better remastered, that kind of thing. Uh, they've also, this one has uh, intros that Vincent Price did for a PBS station in Iowa back in the 80s. And, you know, they did like a weekly series where they showed a film and he did the intro and the outro between each one. So this one has those. And uh, the new version of this collection does not. So, again, it's that, you know, what do you want? Do you want the nicer version of the film or do you want the really cool special feature that kind of, that's a huge reason for me owning this set. And so I just chose to keep this version, keep that and just, you know, enjoy the Mask of the Red Death that's on this one, which is completely fine with me. So uh, looking at it, of course, it's got a, a slip thing there. It's got a, a really, uh, really nice booklet, actually. So um, so there's the booklet, which, you know, again, it kind of is a, uh, you know, it's just got the, the front, the front cover there. And um, of course, it's just, it's got a really nice essay in there. So um, I don't know if you can see that, but I mean, it just... Yeah, you see that there. It's just, I mean, it's a very good essay. And, uh, and of course, it has some some poster art and some different stills from the films. And it just goes through each one. Um, but the films listed on this one are The Pit and the Pendulum, Mask of the Red Death, The Haunted Palace, Fall of the House of Usher, The Abominable, Dr. Fibes, Witchfinder General. So uh, that's the six films on this. And to me, uh, as good as the next two are, I mean, this really is, I mean, well, this is really the the version. If you only want one, get this one, because this one's just really spectacular. Um, but uh, as far as that goes, I mean, it's just the disc art really isn't, you know, it's just more of a text-based kind of disc art. It's nothing real crazy there. Um, and there's actually not a whole lot to anything on the back cover there. It's just got some of the, it's just got some of the credits and different things like that there. So nothing too crazy. Uh, but again, the booklet is really spectacular. I've read that essay. It's a, it's a, it's a good read. I do recommend that. Uh, the second collection again, some good movies. Uh, I do think the first collection is the best of the bunch, uh, but it's it's very much the same kind of design. So, I mean, they all, they all look good on the shelf. They all kind of look like they definitely belong together. And again, another um, another good booklet. And, you know, again, it, it just kind of, let's see if I can kind of, yeah, but you can kind of just go through there and you can, again, another really good essay. Yeah, that's This is the stuff I love whenever you can kind of go in and have something to kind of read and really sink your teeth into as well. Um, like I said, it's a big, again, more, more artwork, more posters, more uh, stills from the films. It's like, man, man, this is just fantastic. Yeah, that's, I mean, that was actually, I think, a bigger booklet than what was on uh, the first collection. But uh, looking at it, I mean, the films on this, The Raven. The Comedy of Terrors, Tomb of Ligeia, Last Man on Earth, Dr. Fives Rises Again, so the sequel to the to the Dr. Fives film in, in the first collection. The Return of the Fly, which is actually a sequel to The Fly, which is not on any one of these, so you do have to get The Fly separately. That's the only thing that's kind of like, huh? But, you know, it is what it is. 
And uh, House on Haunted Hill, one of my absolute favorites. Fantastic film. Uh, so then the third one. Now, I will be honest with you. I, there, I do like most of the stuff in here. It is really, it is enjoyable. You could tell they were starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel a little bit. So it's a little, uh, but, you know, there's the, again, it, the same design from the other two collections in the same tradition. Um, so, you know, again, there's another booklet. This one is not quite as big as the other two, but, but you've got, you know, there's that one there. And then, you know, really not much in the way there, but it's just kind of got some you know, pictures and, and some poster art and everything there. So... So, like, not a whole lot there. Again, they're kind of getting towards the end here. Um, but, but the films on this one are Master of the World, Tower of London, Diary of a Madman, An Evening of Edgar Allan Poe, uh, and Cry of the Banshee. So, uh, again, you know, great films. Love, I mean... This, these are definitely prime uh, watchers for Michelle and I during the Halloween season. We're definitely, we've already like kicked hard into the first collection. I think we're really making the goal to actually try to make it through all three. We'll see how that goes. We usually have grand ideas of, you know, going through certain collections during Halloween. Ultimately, we just kind of go with what we feel like in that moment. Because, I mean, we, we really, we don't want it to be a slog. We don't want it to be like, okay, we're kind of overwatching this series or or these type of films. We really want to kind of switch over to something else. We don't want to feel like we're slogging through something just to say we got through it. You know, if we end up not making it through, that's great too. But, uh, yeah, so that's right there. There's our Scream Factory collection right there. And, of course, here in a couple of days, we're going to be adding Friday the 13th. I'll, like, again, I said earlier, we'll definitely be doing a uh, unboxing video getting that up here this week, you know, uh, probably this Saturday. I'm looking very much forward to that box set and just kind of unpacking everything on it. Uh, we also uh, were one of the ones that got the 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 two posters that came with it. They were like the first 7,000 orders. So we'll definitely be showing that off as well and kind of giving you an idea of what those posters look like. Uh, just, you know, really excited about that box set and, uh, you know, glad that you made it all the way through this video of me going through our Scream Factory collection. F completely uh, recommend uh, going out and, you know, visiting their website and just go into town, pick out your favorite movies and just have fun with it. So uh, and that's the whole point of, of collecting physical media is just really to have fun with it and enjoy it and kind of nerd out and the great thing is, I mean, it can be any type of movie you want it to be. It can, you know, it doesn't even have to be movies. It can be TV shows. It can be music. Um, you know, I mean, we, it's just, that's the great fun part of physical media is just getting to enjoy the things you enjoy and having a very tactile kind of relationship with it. So, uh, hey guys, we really appreciate, you know, you watching this video. If you did like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, as well as subscribe to our channel if you like what we're doing here at D's Nerds. And don't forget to ring that bell icon so you know whenever we have videos coming out. As well, we are finally on Twitter. So we've been on Twitter here for a few, for about three weeks now, I'd say. So please give us a follow there. Uh, we're posting content daily. I'm retweeting things, giving my take on different things as I see it. So please feel free to follow us there. And we're also on Instagram and Facebook, uh, posting content there daily as well. So Follow us there whenever you want to. Uh, we, again, we really appreciate you guys. You know, until next time, I'm Chris, and we are D's Nerds. You guys have a great, safe rest of the day. Bye, guys.